Today we're talking all about the bridal knitting patterns that I had my eye on when I was preparing for my wedding. Welcome back to my knitting channel. My name is Nadine and you can find me at Your Knitting Bestie on Instagram, Ravelry and here on YouTube. On this channel you can expect to find me talking about my knitting. Uh, and what it's like being a knitter in a warmer climate because I'm located here in Australia where it's quite warm. <laughs> um, so today's video is one I'm really excited to tell you about because I spent ages obsessing over bridal patterns in the lead up to my wedding. I ultimately didn't end up making any of these patterns before the wedding um, because my partner and I are insane and decided to plan the wedding in a month <laughs> which didn't leave a whole lot of spare time for knitting um, and also as I mentioned in a little a couple of my other videos uh, I was in a stage of my pregnancy where knitting was just not doing it for me <laughs> but I can't stop thinking about this list of patterns and I kind of think that because I didn't make one before the wedding Maybe I get a makeup project now <laughs> and I can just make myself my wedding object um, after the fact. Because a lot of these patterns, quite independent of being good for a wedding, are just beautiful generally. <laughs> and just items that I think would work in just about anyone's wardrobe if you like the kind of classic clean lines, neutral sort of look, which I think is fairly popular. <laughs> So I think even if I make it um, after my wedding, I would still get a lot of use out of these patterns in the office or just at home or for, um, or for formal events. So I think this video is for you if you have a wedding coming up that you're preparing for, if you have someone that you'd like to knit for who is getting married, a loved one or a good friend, or just if you like the kind of neutral simple classic objects that you might get a lot of wear out of um, throughout your usual everyday life. So I have three categories of patterns for you today. The first one is basically just sleeves. <laughs> uh, the second one is cardigans and I'll touch on this one that I'm wearing in that category as well. And then the final category is wraps. And I have two of them. I think, I think all up I have seven patterns for you. Before I jump into that uh, roundup of patterns, a quick note on yarn. So I think for a wedding, or even just for a special treat yourself project using one of these patterns, I think you could probably justify splurging on a really nice yarn. So I think a lot of the projects call for a mohair. And a mohair is, of course, a beautiful fibre, particularly if you go for the kind of higher end ones. But I thought I would mention something that my stepmother said when she saw me knitting this cardigan, which was ultimately for my sister's wedding last year. And she asked me what I was making it out of. And I said, oh, it's a mohair. And she said, oh, righto, I thought you would have used a cashmere. <laughs> And as soon as she said that, I just thought to myself, oh my gosh, yeah, cashmere would have been awesome. <laughs> that would have been such a great fibre to reach for, but it's just one that didn't come to my mind because I'm just not used to thinking of it. I think possibly because of the weather here, but also the price point is just a little bit higher than I would usually reach for. But for a special occasion object or for my makeup bridal pattern that I hope to make myself, maybe it would be okay. So I just thought I'd pop that out there. If there's any special yarn that you've had your eye on, perhaps this is the project for it. Okay, so let's jump into the patterns then. Okay, so this first category is one I described just now as just sleeves. <laughs> I think maybe that's possibly uh, not the right term. Perhaps it's more of a shrug or a bolero. Uh, and that's that's the category we'll call this one so apologies if I'm looking up to the side here it's just where I've got my notes the first one is one that actually just came out 
really recently, this, actually no, not this month, it's October now, but last month in September, it came out. So I didn't see it before my wedding, but it caught my eye the second I saw it on Instagram and has overtaken the other, the other patterns on my list as being my favorite. And I think this is the one that I will probably end up making just because I love, love, love the look of it. So I'll pop up some pictures. This is called Mist Sleeves and the pattern's going for about $11 AUD. So as you can see, it's kind of these wide balloon sleeves that taper down a little bit to an eye cord edge at the wrist. And it's got this really lovely twist at the front and the back of the Bolero shrug item. <laughs> and it just looks so elegant. It could be this lady. She looks just stunning in her sample photos. I can't believe it. And I think the best thing about this pattern for a wedding is that it wouldn't detract from your dress because I think that's a key element and something I was looking for in these patterns. For a bride, on your wedding day, I think you want the attention to be on how beautiful you are <laughs> um, and also your dress. So when I was looking at these patterns, I was looking for patterns that wouldn't overwhelm the dress. And I think this one would be perfect in that area because it just sits on the top. So it wouldn't kind of obstruct the view of your dress the ho for most of the way down. And also for a climate like Australia, these just sleeves patterns are great because for example, my wedding was in August, which was supposed to be a bit cooler. So I spent a long time looking at these cover-ups and it ended up being super warm on the day. <laughs> so I didn't actually need anything and I just had this one along just in case. But this one, you wouldn't overheat as much as you would with a full length garment. And I think that's really good. So to give you some stats on this project, I think it's really telling that this is still on my list and my favorite so far, because it's a bulky weight pattern, technically. And usually a bulky weight pattern would send me run, running screaming for the hills. <laughs> it's usually just far too hot here for anything bulky. This one is made, I believe, of three strands of lace, um, lace weight yarn, so I'm, I think it's a mohair in this one, held together. Um, but I think it looks, it still looks so light and it still looks so airy that I think you could get away with it, particularly given the construction with it just being on the top and the sleeves. So, the gauge for this one is 14 stitches over 18 rows on 7mm needles, so a quick knit. In fact, I'm trying to convince myself that I might be able to knit this up in two weeks, a week and a half, <laughs> before an event I have coming up. So there are three sizes, which again I think is quite excellent for these sorts of, this category of pattern, because many of them are one size only. So I really like the fact that you can tailor this one a little bit to your body. So it's supposed to be um, 10 centimeters of positive ease based on your high bust measurement, which I think is just above uh, your breasts underneath your arms here. I think that's where you take the measurement. So their suggested yarns are the Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair or the Sanders Garn Ballerina Chunky Mohair. So I, yeah, I think this is the one for me. And the other thing I have to say, and something that also came into my mind with all of these patterns, is that this item would just stay on <laughs> because it's basically the top half of a sweater. So you don't, not even the top half, the top quarter maybe, <laughs> of a sweater. So you don't have to be fussing around with a wrap or rearranging kind of folds of an item to make sure that it looks nice in your photos. I think you would just put it on, maybe make sure the twist is in the right place, front and back, and then you're good to go. I don't think it would be too difficult to wear and it wouldn't tweak me in photos. 
if it had come off a little bit or had unwrapped a little bit. So before I move on, the only other thing I'll say is that I think from memory when I checked Ravelry, there weren't actually that many projects for this pattern on Ravelry. Um, perhaps all of the testers hadn't uploaded their projects. But if you look on Instagram under hashtag missed sleeves, uh, you will see a bunch more photos from her testers and you'll see it across different body shapes. And I think personally that it looks really nice on all of the body shapes that are showcased on Instagram. Okay, so the next pattern in this roundup is a lace capelet by Sydney and Grace Designs. And again, it's sitting at around $10 AUD for this pattern. So the sample photos, which I will put up, have been living rent-free <laughs> in my mind for quite some time. This pattern, I can't stop thinking about because of that beautiful, intricate lace panel at the back and the little bit of detail on the sleeves with the bobbles. I think perhaps this one is knit by knitting the center lace panel and then picking up stitches at the edge and knitting outwards for the cape and then ending in the sleeves. So to give you some detail on it, you're looking for a sport weight five ply yarn, a gauge of 28 stitches and 36 rows on three millimeter needles. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's a lot of knitting. Uh, it is one size, I believe. So for me, that was a little bit of a drawback because although I'm sure there's not that much discrepancy in everyone's wingspan, I think there still is a little bit of discrepancy and I would be worried that if you were a little bit more petite or a little bit more broad than the pattern anticipated, it might not sit as well on you as it does in these pictures. And unfortunately, I don't think there are any projects for this one on Ravelry, so you can't really tell um, how it looks on different people. But I suspect this pattern, and maybe even this designer, are more popular on Ravelry, no sorry, more popular on Etsy than they are on Ravelry. Because if you look at Ravelry, there are ratings for this particular pattern and for the designer more generally, and they are good ratings. So that is what gave me the confidence, I think, to continue obsessing <laughs> over this um, particular pattern. Oh, I would love to know if, you, if any of you end up knitting this pattern, please do let me know because I think it really is quite gorgeous. And the suggested yarn that they have on uh, Etsy and Ravelry for this one is the Lana Grosser. I will put up the name <laughs> on the screen. I'm not pronouncing that. Um, but I think this is one of the only ones that isn't a mohair. So if you have something in your stash, it could be a good one. Okay, so the final pattern in um, this particular category is one I think many people have heard of before. And I have to say, all three of these patterns in this category have been in first place for what I would want to make at some point. <laughs> um, and I, at the moment I'm landing on the Miss Sleeves, but this pattern was the forerunner for a little while and I kind of had my mouse hovering over the purchase button um, for a while before I ultimately decided I had two seconds to make it and couldn't do it anyway. Anyway, it is the Wrap Me Up Sweater Scarf by Knititude. And this is part of a kind of category of patterns that she has, which are all these scarf sleeves, <laughs> if, that, if I could call them that. So this one that I've selected is I think one of the more plain designs because as I mentioned, I was looking for a pattern which wouldn't overwhelm a fancy outfit such as a wedding dress. But she has a lot of other patterns as well. So for example, there's one which is a leaf lace pattern, which is quite lovely. And I think she's also just teased a new design on Instagram really recently as well. So there might be another one coming. But so this one is $9.50 for the pattern. 
It is made in Lion Brand Touch of Merino, so it's a DK weight or an 8 ply. So there you go, another one that's not mohair actually. And the thing is, this one is another one that is only one size. And she does have a note in the pattern that says it has been tested on an extra small, medium, extra large and three extra large bust to see how it sits. And she says that, you know, she includes that I suspect to make the point that it looks good across all of those different variations in size. And the good thing is that it's very popular on Ravelry. So I think there's around 760 projects on Ravelry that you could pop in and have a look through and I'm sure you would find someone of your approximate size so that you could see how it sits on them. Ultimately for me, I leaned away from this one because I think it would take a little bit of finessing to make sure it sat right. And I think it would be possible, notwithstanding that it looks good on different people, <clears throat> for my type A brain, I think it would be difficult to get just the right length to make sure it sits kind of snugly, but not too loose so that it's falling off, um, and to just arrange it so that it looks neat and how it should in all of the photos. And for me, if there was a photo of me walking down the aisle, for me that was walking into a restaurant, <laughs> um, if there was a photo of me walking in with the scarf kind of sitting wonky, which for me might happen because I'm not very good at finessing. <laughs> um, and then there was a picture of that, that would drive me nuts. <laughs> So that's something to consider, but I have to say, I don't know if that concern is just in my mind or not, because if you look at the projects for this pattern, there are so many that have been used for weddings and also I think for bridesmaids. So there would be the bride in one and then the bridesmaids would have a slightly different color and they look really beautiful, <laughs> really nice. So perhaps unboxing it shadows with kind of concerns over arranging it. But that is my thought process. And so I shall tell you. <laughs> uh, oh yes. Okay. So it's a 17 stitch and 19 row gauge on four and six millimeter needles. And yeah, there are a bunch of other variations that you could have a look at if this catches your eye. I kind of had my eye on this anyway, just as a cover up for the office as, a, as an aside. I think it would be really nice because if you just have a shawl in the office and you're typing away, it can be hard to keep it on, it can just kind of fall off. So the sleeves, I think would help with that. <laughs> anyway, so that is our first category done. So the second category is cardigans. And the first one I'm going to mention is I think a bit of a classic in the wedding category amongst knitters. This one is the George's sweater and it is sitting at around $12 AUD. So a little bit more expensive than the other wedding patterns. And I think that's because it's a little bit more, I guess there's a little bit more to the structure of it in terms of making the pattern. And I think it's also just a reflection of its popularity. Uh, it's got the, the wedding tax on it. So this one is two strands of lace held together and your gauge is 15 stitches over 24 rows on 5 and 3.5 millimeter needles. You've got six sizes here and it does look to have some positive ease in it. So I think you could even play with the margins if you're a little bit smaller or larger than those sizes. The detail that really stands out on this project is that gorgeous statement bow. And I think from memory, you can wear this sweater either front or back, depending on where you'd like to showcase. Um, so in this case, the, I think this might be the designer. If it is, she looks so beautiful on her wedding day. Um, but in this case, she has a really beautiful back on her dress. So that is where she's chosen to place it. And I think it is just an iconic 
photo um, and a really beautiful piece. So other than that, I think it's a fairly straightforward cardigan, other than that very deep V uh, where the bow is. From memory, the front is just plain stockinette, um, so you wouldn't have too much detail on the front. Um, so it's a very classic piece, I think. I don't think it would overwhelm your outfit, but it does add a little bit of something to it. Let's just say that. And you would certainly get some good use out of this pattern afterwards as well. If you can imagine this outfit with maybe a low back top and a pair of jeans. Beautiful. Anyway, onwards. So this next one is along the lines of what I was thinking when I made this cardigan. So this is the Rosa Bridal by Alonga Vegana, and it's sitting at around $11 AUD. The suggested yarn is of course their yarn. Along avec Anna silk mohair, again holding two strands together on 3.75 millimeter needles for a gauge of 21 stitches and 29 rows. They have suggested um, a slightly lower amount of positive ease. So usually in my projects, I like around 10 centimeters of positive ease. But for this pattern, and in fact, I applied the same logic for this one. They've gone for slightly less positive ease, so suggesting zero to five centimeters. And I think that more close fitting, slightly tailored look just makes it look a bit more fancy, a little bit more elevated. Um, so I think that's something to keep in mind if you do make a cardigan for a special occasion or if you're just a fancy person. So the good thing is that this one has a whopping 18 sizes which is incredible and very good considering there's that smaller amount of positive ease in it that's recommended. So there's a bit of a smaller margin of error um, on each size, if that makes sense. So with 18 sizes, you would think that you should be able to find a size that would fit within that ease range for you. So this one is just a beautiful classic cardigan. It is a little, there's got a little bit of detail around the raglan. It looks like a bit of a lace eyelet design, but otherwise it is just a straightforward plain cardigan and you would just throw it on the top maybe for some photos if there's a chill while you're outside or before you start dancing at the reception um, and it would just sit beautifully and not be too crazy I think with any dress. I also like the cropped fit, again that's one that I kind of used for uh, this cardigan because so many of um, bridal or formal dresses have a lot of, a lot of the beauty is in the long length of the dress starting at the waist. So I think this wouldn't detract from that. I think that's probably all there is to say about that one, um, but it is a really beautiful cardigan and a nice option. So I'll quickly mention the cardigan that I'm wearing um, because you could take a similar approach to what I did with this one. So I'll pop up some um, footage of me wearing it so that you can see it properly. But basically, it is just a freehand kind of cardigan. I used the numbers from this Strange Brew pattern by Tin Can Knits, which is actually a color work recipe for a pullover. <laughs> um, but I just kind of used the numbers and adapted it into a cardigan. So the biggest um, issue for me in making this cardigan, which as I mentioned was for my sister, was that I needed to find a yarn that was just right for her dress. And she had a slightly off-white cream dress. So most of the project was hunting down some yarn and staring at the photos on the screen of the, the color swatches to see if I could get something close. And I think thankfully this one was. So actually, let me find the name of the yarn for you. Here it is. So for my sister, who is just a little bit smaller than me, I made her the size medium from the Strange Brew pattern. And I used four millimeter, four millimeter needles holding the yarn double. And the yarn I used was the Sandisgarn Tin Silk Mohair in the color 1012 Natural. And that was perfect. So I ended up using um, five balls. I bought five balls of the yarn 
and basically just knit from the top down. I'd selected this pattern for the circular yoke, which I thought looked a little bit nicer than the raglan, or not nicer, a little bit more formal than the raglan. And I pretty much knit to the underarms and then went ahead and knit the sleeves and then used whatever was left on the body. And for my sister who has really bright taste, I put on pink buttons as well, which I took off when I used this for my wedding <laughs> um, and haven't yet pulled back on, which I will do. But anyway, so the reason I mention it is because you don't, of course, have to use a pattern, um, particularly if you're doing a cardigan, because you probably have a pattern in your library that you could adapt if you wanted to and you could make it work for the yarn because probably choosing the yarn to match the dress is going to be the more important consideration. Um, so yeah, that's something to consider. Okay, final category, which is wraps. And the first one I have here is the, it's just called Bridal Mohair Shawl by Danny Young. And it's at about $9.30 AUD. So this one uses three 25 gram balls of mohair and they've suggested the Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair on 5.5 millimeter needles, which actually that might be a nice, a nice yarn to use because from memory, they have a whole bunch of different color variations in the cream slash white family. So you might have some luck finding something for a wedding dress. And the gauge is 15 stitches to 16 rows on 5.5 millimeter needles. So the thing about this project is that it is a large stockinette rectangle. So with full respect to Danny Young, you may not need the pattern to make something like this uh, for a bride or for yourself because I think the, the main thing that the pattern would be offering you is the exact dimensions that look, make it look as beautiful as, as, as it does on this model. For me, I always struggle with figuring out exactly what dimensions are good and I tend to make my wraps way too big and then they just don't sit properly. <laughs> but you might have some experience already in making wraps the correct size. <laughs> so you might not need the pattern. And the only other thing I'll mention for this one is that the open gauge for a mohair, which is kind of what I was going for here, although this one is just a single strand, so it's an even more open gauge, it just looks so airy and ethereal on a person. And they have, I think, a picture of here in the model in a, a bridal gown, and it looks very elegant. So. There is something to be said, I think, for that open gauge and a single strand of mohair for these projects. But when you look at the comments for this project, and I have to say, I found the same thing when I was knitting this one. It's harder than it looks, <laughs> particularly for me because I was using uh, metal knitting needles, which meant that with a mohair, it was just so slippery. And you could really tell because of the slightly open gauge where your tension slips up. Uh, so you could really see the inconsistencies in tension in the fabric. And so that is, is part of the difficulty of using mohair um, alone for these sorts of projects. So you might consider using a different texture of uh, knitting needles or a different material, sorry like a bamboo or something that has a little bit more grip to it, which would probably assist. <laughs> I, I don't have any, um, but I probably should get some. Anyway, and then I'll pop up a photo which shows how they've also shown how this could be worn casually. So you or the person you're knitting for could get some more use out of it after the fact. And the last pattern in this category and for this roundup generally is the chevron cloud pattern. And this is what I've made before actually, although I didn't use the recommended yarns because I think from memory this calls for two weights of yarn. 
So you can kind of see in between the chevrons, there's a much lighter yarn that's used there and it gives it this really cloud-like effect, a really light look, uh, which I wish I had done in mine. I ended up unraveling it and using the yarn for something else. But I really like this for a wedding um, pattern. One, because it's free, love that. There's also uh, 473 projects on Ravelry, so you can really have a look to get some inspo for what sort of yarn sits well in this pattern. And the pattern itself, given that I've knit it, I can tell you is a nice, easy repeat that you can just kind of keep going with without looking at the pattern too much. And if you could find the right color, and if you have, for example, a really simple um, dress, then this pattern might just add a little bit of interest to the outfit, but again, without being anything too crazy. And I think the chevron pattern is a very modern texture. So I think it would be well received or well loved by many brides who are getting married these days. I certainly would love one. I uh, would have loved one in that sort of pattern because I did have a very simple dress. So that's the end of this pattern roundup. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have some ideas either for yourself or a bride in your life. So if you did like the video, it would be really wonderful if you would consider giving it a thumbs up. I think that really helps the video. And if you haven't subscribed, it would be wonderful if you would consider subscribing um, because then you can see my next video and I have some fun things lined up, I think, anyway. <laughs> so thank you again for watching. I always enjoy reading your comments and interacting with you here on YouTube. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.